their song sweet music made. Joining us now is musicologist extraordinaire Eric Alper to talk about songs that don't mention the title in the actual tune. And where did that topic come from? Inspiration for this segment comes from anywhere. And last week I woke up in the middle of the night remembering about something that happened 20 years ago working at a record store where a woman screamed at me saying that the song You Can Feel It All Over by Stevie Wonder was not called Sir Duke. She said, no, 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 it's called You Can Feel It All Over. And I said, no, no, it's Sir Duke. So 20 years later, I still wake up haunted by that memory. So here are five songs that have a title that's not even mentioned anywhere in the song itself. It wasn't easy. Didn't we all go around singing woohoo that year? What year was that? That song, too, by the band Blur. It is the second track found on their 1997 album, released in 1997. Song two reached number two on the UK single chart. It was also nominated for two awards at the MTV Video Awards and two awards at the Brit awards the following year later and then in 1998 the bbc did a list of the greatest songs ever and it made number two 15 why not two Aww. i was going with two i have no idea <laughs> you had a so list appropriate. Of twos there okay next oh get sick get well hang around the ink well hang well hard to tell them everything is gonna sell if my heart gets boxed Dylan. Bob Dylan, Subterranean Homesick Blues. Nowhere in the entire song does he actually mention all of that. It's a kind of tribute to uh, Chuck Berry's Too Much Monkey Business and also Jack Kerouac's novel, The Subterranean. So when he went in the studio uh, back in 1965 to record Bring It All Back Home, one side was all electric, the other side was all acoustic, but still doesn't actually reveal why. <laughs> that song did not have a title in it whatsoever. Okay, then. Well, he's in good company because the Beatles also have one. The Beatles also have one. Woke up, fell out of bed, dragged a comb across my head. Found the way downstairs and drank a cup. And looking up, I noticed. One of the famous final chords in music history. That chord was made to ring out for 40 seconds. By increasing the recording sound level so much that you can actually hear the air conditioner in the background. A Day in the Life by the Beatles took 34 hours to record. In contrast, their debut album took only 10 hours and 35 minutes. So the Beatles' A Day in the Life took a little bit longer than a day to record. Okay. Uh, Now this one, I know the story behind, but let's hear uh, one of my favorite songs growing up. Don't cry. Don't raise your eyes. It's only Except on Teenage Wasteland from CSI. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's the who, Baba O'Reilly. You said that you know where it comes from. I do. Yeah. Um, well, uh, Baba Meher is, yeah. uh, and uh, oh gosh, what was Riley's first name? Tom, Terry Riley. Jerry. Terry Riley. Yeah. Terry Riley. Yeah, we're both Pete Townsend's uh, mentors and yeah. philosophical and musical influences. Um, but to a great deal of people, all you have to say is, it's the song from CSI New York, or it's that Teenage Wasteland song. song. And yeah. funnily enough, Teenage Wasteland was the working title of that song before Pete Townsend decided yeah, to call it Barbara Riley. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Sitting in the morning at the diner on the corner, I am waiting at the counter for the man to pour the car. Tom's Diner. The Tom's Diner of this song by Suzanne Vega is actually Tom's Restaurant in New York City. It's a diner on the corner of Broadway and 112th Street. Suzanne Vega, when she was a college student, used to go into this eatery and write songs and do her homework while sitting in the diner. And you've seen this diner a lot because Uh this was the location that is used for the exterior shots in Seinfeld when they're all sitting in the diner. Mm -hmm. It's the same location. Well, she mentions diner, though. She just doesn't mention Tom's diner. She doesn't mention Tom's diner. I'm sitting in the... I'm sitting in the, in, the the, 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 in, in the diner. Yeah. Right. Do, 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 do. And then so people would come up to me and say, that song, it's that do, 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 do yeah. song. <laughs> do, do. And I'm like, do, do, do? do? Can you, can you do that? Can you, can you tell people the names of the songs? Are you that? Yeah, that I, I think so. Because sometimes like, especially when there were all hits, people would say, what's that song? And it goes like, ba, 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 ba. 
and you would have to figure out what it is. And most often than not, I kind of lied and sold them like one of my friends' bands. It's oh, this is the song. This is it. And they're like, really? And they're like, oh, I totally, absolutely, absolutely. In a store that didn't offer refunds once you opened it. So up. we don't we we don't have much time left. But do you think this happens because they just pick the title of the song and then they write the song and the words don't fit in, or they write the song and. Yeah, sometimes and then that just happens. Can't think of a good title. Yeah, very rarely will artists actually admit that they come up with the title first. But sometimes the title is just so good that you don't want to ruin it by trying to fit the title into the song. But I think sometimes it's just cool to have an artist like that. Just like when bands name a song after themselves. Well, Eric, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And we're going to chat with you next week. Eric Alper is brought to you by Roar Records, proud to support the indie voice.